when there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Oh, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. The blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I'd rather not spend the rest of this winter tied to this fucking couch! Hey guys, Neil here from Neon Black Reviews. So today I'm going to switch things up a little bit. Uh, for the past uh, couple of months or so, I've been going through horror year by year, uh, covering several films from each year before we move on to the next. Uh, and we were um, scheduled to uh, jump right into 1972. Uh, but with, with this being a long weekend for the 4th of July, um, yeah, I've been off uh, since Thursday. I uh, decided uh, this would be a good time for me to just get caught up on some newer films uh, that I've had on my list to watch. I've added several, uh, you know, to the collection uh, and just wanted to take a break from the older films and watch some of the newer stuff that uh, has been coming out here recently. So that's what we're going to do uh, for a little while. I'm not sure, uh, you know, how long um, it'll be before I, we get back into 1972. Uh, but we're just going to move backwards from 2024, uh, maybe into 2023 and and if I feel like it, maybe we'll pick up some films from 2022. Uh, but like I said, we're going to start with 2024. Uh, the first film I'm going to cover is Night Swim. Uh, this one was directed by Bryce McGuire. It stars Wyatt Russell and Carrie Condon. Uh, the story behind this one is uh, we got a, a family that is moving into a brand new house. Uh, the father, played by uh, Wyatt Russell, uh, is a Major League Baseball player, uh, but he has been recently diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, uh, which is a degenerative disease of the central nervous system. So uh, it definitely has a pretty big effect on your hand-eye coordination, that sort of thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's not able to play baseball anymore. Uh, so, you know, his family has been traveling from city to city, you know, as he gets, uh, you know, he moves from team to team. Uh, but now that uh, he's not doing that anymore, they decide to settle down and uh, they choose this house uh, that has a swimming pool. Uh, and the reason for that is because his doctors tell him that, you know, uh, swimming is a good way to at least slow the effects of the, effects of the MS uh, and maybe help, uh, you know, even improve, uh, you know, his motor uh, motor skills. But uh, but anyway, that's the reason they choose the house. Um, but we're watching a horror film, right? So uh, the swimming pool is... Not just an ordinary swimming pool. Uh, it is a um, the pool is fed from a natural spring, so it's not connected, you know, to the city water. Uh, it is actually filled from spring water from you know an underground aquifer or something like that. Uh, so uh, yeah, you know, obviously that has been around from a while uh, for a while, and uh, yeah, it's got uh, some pretty interesting properties. Uh, it's kind of described in the film at one point as uh, you know kind of like a type of wishing well where, uh, you know, you throw a coin in and, you know, it grants your wish. Well, it, it doesn't really work that way, um, but it does, um, it does give and it does take. Uh, and when it takes, it's a little bit more sinister than just costing you a quarter or a dime or a nickel. Uh, so that's the basic setup for this film. You know, once they move in, uh, you know, some strange things start happening in the swimming pool and things just kind of go from there. So uh, that's the basic setup for it. Uh, now, this was a film... Um, I didn't catch it in theaters, uh, like I mentioned uh, not too long ago. I haven't been to the theater in over a year, so I haven't seen any of these newer films, uh, you know, coming out uh, in the theater. Um, and I've only watched, a, you know, a couple here and there, um, you know, on streaming or whatever. But I didn't know a whole lot about this one, uh, but I did know uh, from just a little bit that I'd heard uh, not to have too high of expectations for it. Uh, and after watching it last night, I can tell you, yeah, uh, those uh, those expectations were met. Uh, this is a pretty lackluster film. Uh, it's got a, a 4.7 rating right now on IMDb, which uh, even for a horror film is pretty low. Uh, and there's several things, um, you know, about the film that I thought really dragged it down. Now, on the positive note, um, you know, our, our leads here, Wyatt Russell and Carrie Condon, you know, they are the, the father and, and the mother in this family. Um, I think they did a great job. I think the acting in this film was was quite solid. Um, you know, they're pretty believable uh, as their characters, you know, and as the movie goes along, you know, you do have, 
you know, a certain degree of sympathy, uh, you know, for their situation and what they're going through, because obviously it's not a, you know, an ordinary situation. I mean, some pretty strange things are happening uh, with the swimming pool. Um, you know, the idea, uh, behind this film, I thought was, was a pretty good idea. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's not anything, you know, wild and crazy, uh, you know, it's not overly unique. Um, there's a lot about this film that, you know, is, is pretty derivative to be honest with you. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, a little bit of a mashup, um, you know, between, you know, certain types of films that we've all seen, uh, you know, you don't really, uh, learn, you know, that, uh, you know, this thing is, um, you know, the swimming pool, I'm <laughs> referring to it as a thing, uh, the swimming pool, um, you know, like that wishing well analogy, you don't really understand that part of it into a little bit later on in the film. Uh, when it first starts out, you know, it feels like, uh, you know, the, the swimming pool is haunted by something. So, you know, it kind of does, um, you know, become more of a mashup between, you know, two different styles of horror, uh, as we get into it, so, you know, in, and you know, that's kind of interesting, um, but the, the lore behind this film is, is where this film is severely lacking, that's one of the things, and we'll talk about here, uh, that here in just a second, too, um, but staying on the positive notes, you know, I thought the acting was pretty good, uh, I thought the idea was pretty good, even though it's kind of, you know, stuff that we've seen before, I mean, you can still have a pretty solid horror movie, um, you know, even if it's not overly original, if it's just very well done, uh, the film looks really good. I think this was put out by Blumhouse. Um, I don't know what the budget for, for it was, but I mean, you know, it looks like a pretty slick production. I mean, it looks like it was done by professionals. Uh, it's not, you know, some handheld, uh, you know, video camera, uh, you know, that type of deal. So, I mean, the film looks good. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, on the surface, and, and that's kind of what I was getting at here, <laughs> the, the tagline for this film on the cover is, everything you fear is under the surface. Uh, and, and that's the problem. It's under the surface with this film, right? Because uh, on the surface, this, this film looks pretty good. Uh, like I said, you know, it's got some good acting. Uh, I like the I like the premise of it. Um, I like the idea of you know this guy being a baseball player and getting diagnosed with a, a disease that is preventing him from uh, you know from playing baseball anymore. I mean, they could have used any old reason, but uh, I don't know that I've ever seen that in a horror film before. So I mean, you know, it's got you know just like I said, on the surface, all these minor little things, uh, you know, are working together, uh, to, to make you think that you could have had a pretty good film here. Um, but where it falls short is in the horror department. This film is not scary. Um, all of the scares in this film are, you know, either, you know, a cheap jump scare, uh, here and there. I mean, there's not a lot of them to be honest with you. Uh, and, and the times that, it, you know, it's trying to be, you know, really atmospheric and spooky and creepy, it's just stuff that we've seen a thousand times. I mean, you've got to have more than what this film offers. I mean, you know, a creepy looking, you know, shadowy figure, you know, behind a character, uh, that's not scary anymore. You need more than that. The film has to have a little more teeth um, than just, you know, some some background imagery. I mean, we get to like I said, you know, the analogy of the wishing well was not, it, it was, it was kind of accurate in the sense that, you know, this thing gives and it takes. Um, but there are, you know, these things that are under the swimming pool. They, they don't come out like into the swimming pool. It's like the people that are, that are being attacked are like drawn under it somehow. It's not really all that clear exactly how that works, uh, which again is one of the problems that I had with the film. Um, but I mean, it's like there's these beings. I don't know if they're spirits. I don't know if they're demons. I mean, we don't know what they are uh, because the film doesn't really explain anything. It just says, you know, hey, this thing has been here, you know, for centuries, uh, you know, even before, you know, um, you know, back in, you know, ancient times. Uh, well, I don't know what ancient times would be from, you know, in North America. Um, but I mean, that's kind of how they explain it, that it's just been here, you know, for centuries and, you know, people realized, you know, what was going on with it and they worshiped it and, and things like that. But I mean, there's, there's no real story or lore, uh, behind what is going on in this film. It's just kind of, you know, very, very glossed over. And it's like, you guys spend a little time and create, you know, a, a little world for us. 
to have this movie in, and it would have been a lot more interesting. Uh, and you could have made it a lot more scarier if you wanted to, if you'd have chose to go with an R rating instead of PG-13. Now, I know that, you know, there have been PG-13 films that, uh, you know, that were very good uh, when it comes to horror. I mean, some of my, uh, my favorite, uh, you know, more recent horror films, you know, since the 2000s are PG-13 rated. Uh, so you can do it, um, but most of the time, these PG-13 films, you guys know the drill, they fall real short when it comes to, to actually making you feel, you know, at least creeped out. Uh, this film just didn't have any of that in it. Um, so, yeah, I'm not saying just because they slapped an R on it that it would have been any better, but, I mean, at least they could have at least, uh, you know, tried to make it a little bit more scary than it actually was because, yeah, all the scares and everything in this film are just stuff that we have, you know, seen before uh, and just aren't all that interesting anymore. And it didn't have anything else to add on top of that, uh, you know, to keep that interest level up. Um, it did have one little thing in it that I... I, I it was a minor surprise. Uh, you know, in a film like this, you know, where you've got, you know, this 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 swimming pool that... Uh, you know, apparently, or, or, you know, obviously the people moving in don't know anything about it. So at some point in the film, uh, you know, we've got to, you know, have the exposition behind what is going on. And sometimes, you know, they might find a, a diary from the, you know, somebody that lived in the house previously that they read and figure out what's going on. Or maybe there's a, you know, a local person that, uh, you know, knows what's going on that they finally meet. Um, here, um, they track down, or the, the wife tracks down uh, the previous owners of the house. In the opening scene of the film, we see that their daughter goes missing in the pool. We don't really know exactly what happened to her. We just know something bad happened. And, of course, that family moves out, and then this family moves in. So she tracks this, uh, this woman down uh, that used to live in the house. And that went dark. Uh, yeah, uh, really dark. Uh, not in a scary kind of way. They, they did try to make the, the scene scary, um, and it didn't work. But, I mean, it was not the um, the story, you know, from the previous owners that I was kind of expecting, especially the way this film was going. So it did take a, a pretty little dark turn there, uh, and it was necessary uh, to set up the ending of the film uh, because, uh, yeah, what is actually um, going on at the end of the film, it's a pretty dark idea. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's a pretty disturbing thing. If you were to think about, you know, a family, um, this is actually, you know, what they're going through. Um, but unfortunately the film was just not powerful enough, uh, to capitalize on that, uh, and make it, you know, a really good, you know, spooky, creepy horror film. So that's about all I can say about this one, I guess, um, as far as, uh, you know, not going in into any real spoilers, which I obviously don't want to do. Um, so, yeah, kind of makes me glad I didn't pay to see it in the theater. Uh, it is streaming on Peacock. If you have a subscription to Peacock, you can uh, watch it for free. I don't know if it is uh, currently uh, streaming anywhere else. Um, but, yeah, if you're going to watch this film, uh, that would be how I would recommend you do it, is watching it for free somewhere. Uh, so, uh, take my advice uh, for, for what it's worth, uh, but that's how I feel about it. Uh, yeah, this is a yeah, pretty lackluster horror film. So, there you go. That's my thoughts on Night Swim. Uh, if you've seen the film, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about it. I always like to hear what you guys have to say. And before you head out, if you would, smash that thumbs up for me, guys. Uh, that like does help the video out here on YouTube, and I appreciate you doing that for me. And if you haven't already subscribed to Neon Black Reviews, go ahead and do that as well. Just click that subscribe button down there, hit the bell next to it, and turn on those notifications. And that way you'll never miss a review. So as always, guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll see you.